Uh, if you want to suppose uh, prove this relationship, we can also prove this very simple by using uh, the uh, laws for K Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, now, if uh, there is no deflection in this galvanometer, okay, there is no deflection in the galvanometer, that means IG is zero. So the entire amount of current I1, which is flowing through this AB, will pass to the branch BC. So even in this branch, we'll be having the same current I1. Okay, same at this node. If we'll apply KCL, if we'll apply KCL at this node D, we can see that I2 plus zero. That means the incoming current must be equal to I outgoing current. So even this would give us an outgoing current of I2 across the branch DC. Now, uh, if you want to determine this relationship, if you want to prove this relationship, uh, what we can do is we can apply KVL in these two loops. Suppose we consider these two loops and the directions which we'll be uh, taking, okay, that would be in the clockwise direction. So we'll be assuming a clockwise direction, the direction for the loop. Okay. Uh, so suppose uh, we'll start by applying K, uh, we'll start by applying KVL in the loop A B D A. Okay, so if we'll uh, apply KVL in the loop A B D A. Okay. Now, as uh, we can see, if we'll start from the point A, you can see that the current and the direction of the loop both coincides. So the potential drop would be negative. So we'll be getting minus I one R A. And for this galvanometer, the current through the galvanometer and the loop direction is same. So again, negative minus IG into G. Okay. Here, the direction of the current and the direction of the loop, both are in the opposite direction. Okay. One is from bottom to top and the current flowing is from top to bottom. So the value of the potential drop would be positive. So plus I2 times RC equals to zero. Uh, but as uh, we have seen that the deflection in the galvanometer is zero. So this term will go to zero. So we have I1 RA equals to I2 RC. This is equation number one. This is the relation one, which we have obtained by applying KVL in the loop ABDA. Now, similarly, we can uh, apply KVL in the other loop okay, BCDA. So if we'll apply KVL in the loop BCDB, and we have assumed the direction in which we are traversing as clockwise. So starting from the point B, you can see that the first element to be encountered is the resistance RB. And in this case, the direction of flow of current and the direction of the loop, both are coinciding. So we will be having a negative potential of I1 RB minus I1 RB. The other element is the resistor R2. In this, the direction of the current and the direction of the loop, both are in the opposite direction. So we will be having an increasing potential drop, so a plus sign plus I2 RD. Okay. Here again, the direction of the current through the galvanometer IG and the direction of the loop are in opposite direction. So we'll be having plus IG into G equals to zero. Okay. Here again, as we have seen that there is no deflection in the galvanometer. So this term would go to zero. So from here, we'll be obtaining the other relationship as I1 RB equals to I2 RD. This is the relation two. Now, uh, if we will see these two relations, relation one and relation two, okay, we can divide equation number two from equation number one. And after dividing equation two from equation one, we can get, get I1 RA divided by I1 RB is equal to I2 RC divided by I2 RD. Okay. So this reduces to RA by RB is equal to RC by RD. So this is a very important principle of Wheatstone bridge, which suggests that if the resistance are connected in this ratio, that is the ratio of RA by RB, the same as RC by RD, then at this point, there would be no deflection in the diagonal branch, that is in this diagonal branch. And uh, that means, uh, in, in other words, we say that the potential at point B and D are same. The potentials at the point B and D are same, or there is no potential difference. Okay. Uh, the results could have also be uh, said in another way, like if there is no deflection in the galvanometer, this suggests that the resistors are in this ratio. Okay. Uh, we could have also uh, uh, written this, we could have also uh, written this like this, RA by RC is equal to RB by RD. Okay. So since these are in ratios, you can see that we can interchange the positions of the resistors. That means RB can be given in place of RC. Uh, now, uh, based on this uh, Wheatstone bridge, the concept of uh, Wheatstone bridge, uh, we can also reduce some of the circuits, okay, some of the resistors uh, circuits. Uh, so, the, uh, in order to find the equivalent resistors between the two points, okay, what we can do is we can use Wheatstone's bridge principle. 
okay, to solve to simplify the uh, resistor to simplify the circuits containing combinations of resistors as we will see in the next example a simple example wherein uh, we will use this principle of Wheatstone bridge to reduce the circuit Uh, so this is the electrical circuit given to us and uh, we are required to determine the equivalent resistance between the points A and B. Okay. Now uh, if we will look closely to the circuit we can uh, we can see that uh, the resistors are neither in series nor in parallel and uh, this does not resemble even this does not resemble the Wheatstone brace at the first glance. But if we look at carefully uh, we can uh, see that this actually is in the pattern of Wheatstone uh, network that is it uh, represents the Wheatstone network. Suppose uh, uh, I name this as C and this point as D. Okay, so if we will uh, redraw the circuit, okay, we can uh, redraw the circuit like this. We have the point A. From this point A, we have two branches. Okay. One going to the branch C, having a resistance 10 ohm. The other going to the branch D, okay, having the resistance 10 ohm. From between D to C. Or between C to D, we have a resistance of 20 ohm. Okay. Between point C and B, there is a resistor of 10 ohm. Okay. And between B and D, we have a resistor of 10 ohm. Okay. So from here, we can see that actually this is a pattern of Wheatstone network. This follows the Wheatstone uh, network uh, uh, bridge circuit diagram. And uh, as we can see here, okay, this is RA, this is RB, this is RC, this is RD, and this is the diagonal branch resistance. Now, if we will uh, see the ratios of RA by RB, okay, this is 10 by 10. Okay, if this is RA, this is RB, this is RC, and this is RD. Okay, these are the resistors. The value of RA is 10 ohm, the value of RB is 10 ohm, RC 10 ohm, and RD 10 ohm. Okay, we have the ratio of RA by RB and RC by RD, both the ratios are same. That means RA by RB is equal to RC by RD. Now, this is the condition for the Wheatstone network. So, if this condition is satisfied, we can say that at this diagonal branch, no current will be flowing across this diagonal branch. Now, if no current is passing through this galvanometer, oh sorry, is in this branch, we can say that this branch is a redundant branch. Okay, that means the potential difference between the points. C and D is zero. So, since this element becomes redundant, we can remove this element. Okay, we can remove this element. This would be an open circuit. Okay, so from here, we, what uh, we can see is that the equivalent res combination of the resistors between the points A and B, okay, is actually the series combinations okay, of two resistors, 10 ohm, 10 ohm. RC and RD, these two connect, these two resistors are connected in series and in whole, these combinations of resistors are in parallel to each other. Okay. That means what we can do is we can uh, simplify the circuit. Okay. Since RA and RB are connected in series, okay, this can be replaced by a single resistor of value. Since when the resistors are connected in series, the final value is the addition of these two resistors. So we'll be getting a 10 plus 10, that would be 20 ohm. Similarly, at this, at the bottom half, at this, this branch, this 10 ohm and this 10 ohm are connected in series. So we can replace these two resistors by a series combination of a resistor, a single resistor of value 10 plus 10 ohm. That is 20 ohm. 
Okay. Now here you can see that these two resistors 20 ohms are connected in parallel since both the endpoints for these resistors are in common. So when they are connected in parallel, the equivalent combination for the resistors connected in parallel is given as R1, R2 upon R1 plus R2 for two resistors. Okay. So where R1 and R2 both are 20 ohms. So if we'll simplify for this, we'll be getting the value of R equivalent as 10 ohms. Okay. So this is the value of the equivalent resistance okay, between the points A and B. So we can uh, remove these two resistors and replace it by a single resistor of value 10 ohm. So this is the resistance between the points A and B. This is the final resistance between the point A and B as seen by this circuit. Okay. So this is how we can see that uh, by applying the principle of Wheatstone bridge, you can see that this branch becomes redundant. So we can see that it, the equivalent resistance between the points A and B is independent of the resistance of this branch. So whatever be the resistance of this branch, we'll be getting the same value of the resistance 10 ohm.